Let's move on to the next guest speaker. Let us introduce him. He is Mr. Naoki Tamura. He's a director of Institute for Strategic Leadership, a nonprofit organization that provides corporate middle managers with strategic leadership programs. He is four time All Japan champion of English public speaking in Toastmasters and competed at the World Championship of Public Speaking semifinal three times in 2011, 2013, and 2015. He is the first Japanese speaker who won the second place at the semifinal of the World Championship of Public Speaking, becoming one of the top 20 public speakers in the world in 2015. He won the championship of ICEE, the Intercultural English Exchange Competition in 2010 and 2015. He is currently coaching university students and business professionals in public speaking, presentation, and storytelling. His speech title is Leverage the Power of Public Speaking. Leverage the Power of Public Speaking. So Mr. Tamura, please come up to the stage. Uh -oh. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Thanks for a great introduction. Probably that was a wonderful introduction. It's probably the best introduction I have ever written. <laughs> 20 years ago, I was a horrible speaker. I was terrified of public speaking. I was terrified of being on the spot. Every time I made a presentation at a meeting, the audience would look like this. <laughs> I was a horrified speaker. I sucked. I was putting so many people to sleep so many times that one day, one of my colleagues came over to me and said, hey, Noki, um, can you do me a favor? I have been having trouble sleeping at night. <laughs> Do you mind coming over to my house and make a presentation beside my bed? <laughs> I was that horrified. I was frustrated being a poor communicator. So I decided to improve my public speaking ability. I would like to improve how I can communicate with a group of people. So I bought a book and I studied a lot and I put some of them into practice, and I gradually my communication skills and public speaking skills was getting better and better. And then finally, a few years later, I got a huge assignment at the age of 27. I was standing in front of the door with the shining plate that says, Chief, executive officer. My hands were shaking and my legs were trembling. And if you had been beside me, you would have seen my heart popping out of my chest. Well, it was actually not popping out of my chest. It was almost <laughs> popping out of my chest. And I was about to give a presentation to the corporate CEO, Mr. G. And Mr. G was a man who founded one of the largest marketing corporations in Japan, leading 20,000 people. His charisma was the reason that I had decided to his corporation. And I had always been dreaming that someday I would have the opportunity to make a presentation in front of him. And at that moment was about to happen. Come on in. Okay, here we go, Naoki. You memorized every word. You practiced a lot, hundreds of times. You can do it. Go for it. And I opened the door, stepped into the room, and I saw a dignified, gray-haired man sitting in a chair. And that was the first time I met the 74-year-old company CEO, Mr. G. 
throughout the presentation, I was so nervous that I couldn't see his face. I ch choked a lot, and I st 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 stumbled a lot. <laughs> but I managed to finish my 10 minutes presentation. I was so filled with accomplishment, and I proudly looked at him, and he was I was shocked. Is this something that I had been dreaming of? I was devastated. I was confused. Have you ever had your dream crushed like this? How did it make you feel? But then Mr. G opening his eyes. So I quickly said, okay, that was just an introduction. Let's start my presentation now. <laughs> and I did the presentation, exactly the same presentation all over again, <laughs> as if nothing had happened. And I finished the presentation for the second time. I said, Mr. G, I need your approval. What do you think? What is what do you think of my proposal? I need your approval. And Mr. G slowly stood up, walking away from the chair, turned around to me and said, you decide. I said, well, well I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I can't decide. And he said, if you want to do this, just go for it. But if you don't want to do this, just forget about it. You decide. And that was the moment Mr. G made me realize that there is a huge difference between making a decision and asking for approval. Making a decision is to take a full responsibility and trust your ability and do whatever it takes to get the job done. Asking for approval, on the other hand, is to take zero risk, doubt your ability, and do whatever it takes to avoid any confrontation. As a matter of fact, all I had been doing in the office was asking for approval. And there was no challenge. There was no fun. Life sucked. And I thought it was time for me to stop living somebody else's decision. One year later, I met Mr. G for the second time. It was in the morning. I was running late. I jumped into the office elevator, and I guess who was standing in the elevator? Gray-haired, dignified man was standing right there. And my heart was beating faster like a drum. It was almost stopped. But I tried to look cool and say, good, 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 good evening, Mr. G. <laughs> it was 8 o'clock in the morning. I said to myself, now, kid, just impress him. Just start the conversation. Say something. And I said, I, I like your tie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Naoki, keep going. Develop the conversation. Keep going. Damn it, he's not wearing a tie. <laughs> <sighs> Recovery. When I was panicking, and Mr. G said, how is your presentation going. I said, Mr. G, I'm honored you remembered the presentation that I made almost a year ago. <laughs> and he said, of course I remember it because you did it twice. <laughs> Th thank you. As a matter of fact, the, the project was terminated. It was a failure. And Mr. G, stepping out of the elevator, and he said, if you think it is a failure, it is a failure. But if you think it is a part of success, it is a part of success. It is your project. You 
decide. And that was the moment I decided to control my life. I decided to believe in myself. And a few days later, I decided to go to the United States because I wanted to be, I always wanted to be a leader, global leader in the industry. And a few years later, I flew to San Francisco to study e-commerce. I wanted to be a global leader. And shortly after arriving at the United States, I noticed that the United States is the land of free and the home of the brave, and at the same time, the nation is about presentation. You can't survive without expressing yourself. I was still struggling with presentation. I still sucked. I didn't know what to do. Have you ha ever had an experience that you don't know where to go? Have you ever felt that there was nowhere to go? I was exactly something like this. I wanted to improve, but there was nowhere to go. So one day in 2003, I had a major opportunity. One of my classmates, Jake, came over to me and said, hey, Naoki, why don't you come to Toastmasters? And he said, Toastmasters is the place where you can practice your public speaking. Toastmasters is the place where you can practice your presentation. It is a place where you can screw up. You can mess up with your presentation, just like you do all the time in the class. It was like a uh, oasis in the desert to me. That was exactly what I had been looking for. Behind my head, it was like an angel singing a song. Ah! I don't know how angels sing, but something like this. So that was the kind of kickoff of my public speaking history, Korea. And over the next 15 years, I was always thinking about how to be an effective communicator. I was always thinking about how to be an entertaining, exciting entertainer, and how to be a motivational speaker who can inspire people around me to action, to take an action on my ideas, the visions, and the beliefs. And also how I have leveraged the power of public speaking. So today's presentation, the image is like this. There are just three things that I would like to share with you. Just the three things, that's it. No big deal. I just wanted to say this because Steve Jobs said it. Three things, I would like to share three stories. That's it, no big deal. So, three things, no big deal. The, one, the first one is the world. And the second is the leverage, the two. And the third is yourself, mind. So the image of this is that if you can, or you can even change the world, you can even move the world by using the leverage with a certain mindset. So this is the image that I'm going to talk about. This is the story. The first one, let me talk a little bit about the world, how the world has evolved in the past few decades, and what has been driving the world, and what is the things that you needed to know to practice public speaking. This is the uh, GDP. And you might have noticed that until 1995, Japan was growing, just like the United States. And what happened in 1995? All of a sudden, Japan stopped growing. That, uh, there was a major event. There was a major game changer. What do you think it was? 
Okay, say it together. Three, two. Okay, what happened in 1995? Three, two, one. Windows. Windows, thank you. Windows 95 was released. That was a major game changer. That was called before Gates and after Gates. Before 1995, Japan was growing because of the manufacturing muscle power. And after 1995, it is called the, uh, the before 1995, before Gates, it is called the period of manufacturing. And after 1995, it is called the period of innovation. Japan had an enormous competitive edge before 1995 because it had a wonderful educational and a cultural advantage for manufacturing things. You can look at this. Um, the 5S was praised by the world. When it comes to manufacturing, Japan was the leading corporation, leading company. 5S are like tidiness, orderliness, cleanliness, standardization, dis discipline. And no matter how other corporations in other countries try to mimic and duplicate the way Japanese corporations did in making things, like manufacturing things, they couldn't catch up because of the base, the culture, the education was totally different. That is the huge advantage that the Japanese corporations showed. And these are the five social systems and the Japanese government or the society created the, these social systems so that the Japanese manufacturing corporations can take advantage, make, make the most out of the situation. Lifetime employment, seniority-based wages, and periodic hiring, in-company training, enterprise union, those are the social systems that were created so that Japan can win in the sector of manufacturing to the world. And those social systems were created as if this trend would be continuing forever. However, unfortunately, it didn't. In 1995, the game was totally changed. Now, look at the United States. It keeps growing. What is the factors behind it? In the period of innovation, innovation requires a major paradigm shift. A major at a major paradigm shift, innovation, it requires a major change at a, ma at, at a, at a paradigm shift, your current value, your current assets need to be destroyed, destroyed. And instead, something uncertainty, something that you've never heard of, something that you've never seen, must be built. And the biggest challenge for that, if, to imagine that if you're a leader, if you're a leader trying to bring about the change, bring about the innovation to your organization, what is the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge is to reorganize the foundation and reintegrate the system. And the biggest challenge of all is that if, imagine that if you're a leader, you need to make them believe in why you do it. You needed to make them believe why you do it. They are full of uncertainty because in innovation, this is totally new. Nobody has done this before. And the people started to doubt and how you can make them believe in why you do it. These are the excellent leaders who demonstrated the growth, who sustained the growth. And it takes the power of public speaking, and it takes the power of storytelling, it takes the power of motivational speech to make it happen. And those are the leaders who did it. 
And it is not a coincidence that those leaders are a very good, amazing storytellers and motivational speakers and excellent speakers. And it is not a coincidence because none of them were born with the excellent oratoric talent. They were not born with the talent. They acquired it. They acquired those oratorial talents through training, through coaching, and they have been focused on one thing in getting this public speaking ability, and it is creating a change. It creates a change. So the whole reason that they are learning how to speak is because they wanted to bring about a change, because they need to make their innovation happen. So one thing that I want you to notice, I recognize throughout the process of learning public speaking is that I want you to put the create a change always into the center of your mind. I know that there are so many reasons why you are doing public speaking. Uh, here there are so many ESS students and some of them started to be interested in public speaking because probably uh, you got a hero, and you saw one excellent speaker, oh, I want to be like this, I want to be speaking like this. And some people say that maybe I want to have a logical thinking through the public speaking. And uh, some of them probably say, uh, just like I was, I wanted to look good on stage. But just forget about it. I think the, all of those leaders and uh, um, most of the historical great leaders learned how to speak just because they wanted to create a change. You will notice that when you are in the society, there are so many opportunities to use your public speaking muscles. Like, uh, well, just from the small thing, asking, some, asking for help, asking someone for help. Um, and also the introducing an idea in the meeting and introducing a new service, a new product at the press conference, persuading your client to buy your services and products and probably you may have an opportunity to inspire hundreds of people so that you, they can follow your ideas and those are the opportunities that you will definitely have somewhere in the future. And a change is the key word. If you can't create any change, you're wasting your time of learning how to speak. So be a catalyst is that the catalyst is just a shokubai in Japanese. So this is uh, my first message. I'm not saying that you need to be like those excellent leaders, but there are any kind of opportunities that you can be a leader. Because public speaking is all about leadership. You can decide when and how, or what kind of leader you could be. So this is my first message. And the second one is the leverage. Well, leverage here is just a device. It is just a tool of amplifying your message. You have a great idea. You have a wonderful message. But if you can't use the leverage, you're just telling a thing to other people. But if you need, if you can effectively use the leverage, you can amplify your message. You can send your message very effectively to the audience. So I would like to share some of the, uh, the device the probably you may want to use. Those are the three favorite devices I would like to introduce today. The first one is curiosity. The curiosity is very important in public speaking because in a business world, they are all busy. And um, usually the first 30 seconds, if you can't grab the attention of the audience, probably audience would mentally lose 
lose you mentally, you know, tuning out of your, tuning out of the attention. Unfortunately, unfortunately, most of the presentations that are conducted in the business world is like something like this. It's like a crappy information, and the presenter is like, okay, hello, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Let's start my presentation. My company is established in 1974, and its sales was about 30 billion yen, and the number of employees is 334, and we have branches in Sapporo, something like this. Would you like to keep on listening? It, it is boring, like it is, uh, he is uh, boring, it's bored to death. So the curiosity, even in the business presentation, it is effective to use a story. So when I was working uh, in a previous corporation, I started like this, the, uh, when introducing my corporation. I always use this slide because my company was a TV shopping company. And do you know what this is? I mean, in 1994, there was no TV program in the middle of the night. And in 1994, if you had to turn on the TV, you would have seen some kind of snow static like this, like sandstorm, because there was no TV program. The president of a Canada corporation, Mr. Nakamura, was struggling. But he was about to give up on his dream. Sales were down, profits diminished, the cash hitting the bottom, the employees, motivation was down. He was about to give up on his dream. He was depressed, discouraged, and watching TV like this in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning. He was watching the snow static for about 30 minutes, and then he had a great idea. The next morning, he went to a TV station, he went to a TV broadcasting station, he met a president of the broadcasting company. And Mr. Nakamura said, hey, I would like to buy the snow static, the midnight air time. And the president said, Mr. Nakamura, are you crazy? Two o'clock in the morning, Nobody is watching TV. You are wasting your money. You are throwing your money into ditches. Are you sure about that? Are you really, do you really want to do this? Mr. Nakamura said, look, I believe in myself. I believe in myself. This is what I'm going to do. Two weeks later, the first, Japan's first TV shopping infomercial was broadcast. How many people do you think watched that infomercial? Zero. The next morning, the newspaper said Japan's first infomercial, Japan's first American style infomercial failed miserably. The viewing rate was 0.000%. And people started to make fun of him. Mr. Nakamura was crazy. And rivals in the same industry started to ridicule him. Hey, Mr. Nakamura, are you crazy? You are throwing money, you are spending for nothing. You are spending your money for nothing. And the TV made people in the media industry said, Mr. Nakamura is totally stupid. He was like, a, it was like opening a store in the middle of the desert island. 20 years later, Mr. Nakamura's TV shopping, TV corporation, broadcast more than 300 infomercials every day at 100 TV stations growing one of the top TV shopping corporations in Japan. What happened? What happened over the, the past 20 years? What kind of 
competitive advantage he used? What was the marketing strategy he used? How did it happen? Would you like to know it? And my audience said, yes, definitely, yeah, yeah, come on, come on. So this is a curiosity, this is a curiosity device um, I used. So some people say that it is weird to use a story in the business presentation, but this is how I use the story into my presentation so that getting the curiosity. The point of this is that don't just feed it, don't just feed the information, just make them want the information by using the curiosity device. The second point, catchphrase. Yeah, this is very um, easy uh, in, in the concept. This is a catchphrase. Catchphrase is like a memorable phrase. If you're delivering a speech, like a five minute presentation, 10 minutes presentation, anything. But there is always one clear message that you want to convey to your audience members and that phrase should be memorable, short enough and catchy so that people can remember. I'd like to introduce some of the uh, memorable catchphrase. The number one is challenge the conventional wisdom. Challenge the conventional wisdom that it, it's, the catchphrase is always memorable and effective if one thing is widely known, it is a wisdom, and you deny it and offer something different. Something like this, try not to be a man of success, try to be a man of value. This is about Einstein. Uh, please take a picture if you want to take a photo, it's okay. Um, the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge but imagination. This is also Albert Einstein. Life isn't about getting and having. It is about giving and being. This is not my victory. This is your victory. It's Barack Obama. And don't think, feel it, Bruce Lee. You don't have to be great to serve. You have to serve to be great. So challenging the um, conventional wisdom and then provide something totally opposite and uh, create a clear, crisp, memorable phrase like this. And this can be a um, very good approach to create it. If you have no idea how to create a memorable sentence, this is uh, one of the hint. And also make it memorable. These are the, my favorite catchphrase that are actually used in some kind of speech contest. Trust is a must. It's called alliteration. Alliteration is the, those two words share some part of the, uh, the some part, on, on the same sound, like a trust is a must. Change often, change small. And your dream is not for sales. Get in the game, reach out. I see something, but I don't know what it is. Stay hungry, stay foolish. There are some familiar phrases because probably you might have watched some of those speeches and those are the very crisp and memorable phrase. People remember even though they listened to the speech more than 10 years ago. So those are the, the, uh, the catchphrase. The, uh, the third one about the leverage is the reliving. Reliving. So what is reliving? Reliving is the tsuitaike in the Japanese language. Um, this is kind of a storytelling term. So it, it is important to share your experience with your audience members. If you are telling a story as if the incident, the event is happening here and we are sharing the time, you are sharing the place. Like if I said, if you had been standing beside me, you would have seen me, my hands were shaking. So in that sense, I wanted to draw your audience into my world. Just instead of explaining the situation that I experienced, why don't you use this kind of device? If I had been standing beside me, 
in 1995, you would have seen my hands shaking, something like this. And then you can bring your audience members actually here. And the audience feel like they are reliving the story with the speaker. And also the, uh, yeah, so this is the one that draw the audience into your world. The next one is to use dialogue. Well, dialogue is the heart of storytelling. In the, uh, the previous, my episode, what if I said, and then Mr. G told me that I should be the one who makes a decision instead of you decide. What if just I said, and I finished the presentation, I looked at him, and he was sleeping. Instead of he was It's just a, one of the dialogues. To, and also, what if I said, and then and Mr. G said, he remembered, because he remembered the presentation I did. So dialogue gives you a um, chance to use your vocal variety. Using the dialogue gives you the, the chance to make it more vivid, make it look like more vivid story. And uh, uh, using the dialogue just to sh you know, makes, you, makes it possible for you to share the moment with the audience members. So if you have a chance to use the dialogue instead of just narrating what happened, this is a device that you can share the moment with the audience members. And also ask questions. Just instead of just keep talking about yourself, sometimes you know, I could ask you a question. Have you ever felt something like this before in the middle of the story? And I just asked you a question. How did it make you feel? Have you ever thought that you were not good enough in the middle of the story? And then it can connect with the audience members. So those are the, uh, the device part. And uh, uh, the final part is the mindset. The mindset that I would like to share today is the, it's kind of blank. I just decided to leave it open. Because uh, I think this is a part that you decide. I said that public speaking is all about leadership. And leadership is not about leading other people. Leadership is all about leading yourself. If you look at the, the great historical leaders like Walt Disney, John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr. Those are the leaders. None of them tried to lead other people. They believed in themselves. They believed in themselves. They decided to lead themselves. And the followers just followed. So the, the point that I was trying to make here is that the message is blank. This is kind of an empty box. And I think it is very profound because you open it up, it is empty. And that means that you decide what it means. As a matter of fact, eight years after I met Mr. G in the elevator, I went to a funeral. I went to his funeral because Mr. G died at the age of 83. And I was one of 5,000 people who were attending his funeral. And I was standing in front of his picture, and I said, Mr. G, now that you are gone, who's going to be the next leader? And I heard it, and I felt it for the third time. And he said, you decide. So it's all about controlling yourself. 
This is the reason why you are learning public speaking. Because somewhere in the near future, definitely there is a moment, there is an opportunity where you're going to use your public speaking muscles. Thank you very much. Thank you.